This video explains how to generate and use full frame images in Qtegra version 2.2 for ICP OES. To set up the use of full frame images within a lab book, start by going to Measure Modes. Here, the full frame parameters can be set for all four viewing modes UV and Visible, Actual and Radial. In this lab book, I will only set up the full frame images to be taken for the actual UV and visible views. As a default, the option to capture full frame images is set to No. We can change this by using the drop down menu. Here we are given two options. IntelliFrame intelligently selects the integration time for each wavelength dependent on its intensity, with more intense wavelengths giving shorter integration times. This is good for interference definition but doesn't give a representative image of the sample. Selecting Yes allows us to set an integration time for each image so that it can be measured in a similar way to the samples. Let's select Yes for both the UV and visible views. We can set integration times for the full frame images. The default is the time set for analysis, so I will leave them as 5 seconds each. So now we can create our sample list ready for analysis. So let's create a sample called Unknown. And then to activate the acquisition of full frame images on this sample, simply click the full frame tick box. And then we just assign auto sampler positions to the samples. Once complete, we then save the lab book. And then press run to start analysis. Now that our analysis is complete, we can see that the unknown sample appears to have an interference on the cadmium 228.802 nanometer line. So let's move to the full frame page. If we open up our unknown sample, we can see that we get a full frame image for each of the views that were selected in the measure modes. Let's have a look at the high actual. Here we can see the full frame image of the high actual view. Now let's have a look at the low actual. We can control the magnification of the image by using the zoom in and zoom out buttons. Or alternatively, by double clicking on a location, we can zoom into that area. We can use the lighten or darken buttons to adjust the brightness of the image. To verify what is causing the interference on this cadmium line, then we can click on the peak and a list of potential interferences based on the wavelength database is shown on the right. I suspect here that the interference is arsenic, so let's right click on the arsenic. And then if we select show primary arsenic lines, then the primary arsenic lines are added into the full frame image. So if we zoom out of the image, then we can see that there are peaks in each of the arsenic subarray locations. This confirms that the arsenic is present in the sample and is most likely interference, and so the cadmium 228.802 nanometer line would require an inter-element correction to be performed upon it for correct results. 